<laughs> okay, good to see you. All, all friends there. Very good. Yeah, we are expecting you and then students especially. <laughs> okay, so uh, anyhow, this is, uh, as you know, they, they asked me to, 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 to say something about this topic and I, I think I have something to say. So let's see what will happen. Uh, uh, I think that we have to wait a little bit or... Yeah, we I can wait uh, maybe, maybe a couple of more minutes. Yes, uh, okay. Maybe some, some more people will join. Yeah. Maybe two minutes and then you can start. I, I right. Think. Very good. Okay. So let me see. I see, no, I, I cannot see properly, but I think I've seen our Lee. Yeah. Then I... In. Yes. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> okay. And Mirko, by the way, thank you for everything and for your uh, kind uh, help. I'm really eager to hear what, you, what you're going to say. I was expecting your presentation in paper, so I'm really happy that you're here. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mirko. No, I, I was saying that I'm not going to... In the meantime, I received messages. Uh, it's a crazy morning today. Um, I'm not going to talk about Sri Lanka and uh, you know or Myanmar because it's uh, it's too complex for me, my uh, poor knowledge. But I would say something that is including also politics. Uh, Please tell us more about Sanskrit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <coughs> And um, yeah, and Vladimir, let me know when I can go and. Uh, oh, you, you can start. I I, I will mm, admit participants as they as they join. So, okay, okay, I think we're good to to to, to start. Perfect. Okay, so um, uh, as my students, unluckily for them, <laughs> know very well, I'm going to show uh, a PowerPoint. And uh, and uh, I collected some some slides and I prepared some some more um, ideas that are connected to the the, the thing the topic of this uh, conference um, that is war and conflict uh, resolution. Um, it's it's a topic that is touching a lot of Buddhist philosophy. I think I believe so. I want to uh, show show you what I, what kind of ideas I, I can, I could collect uh, from this point of view. And obviously it's very important because it's connected to uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, I don't want to touch Tibet, I don't want to touch China and, uh, and so on and so forth because then uh, it becomes uh, very difficult, uh, very difficult to manage all these different forms of Buddhism, different forms of politics, different time, different situation, different societies, different cultures, and so on. But I will try to show you something that I found uh, mainly here in Southeast Asia. Um, so I know that um, we are online, but I think if you want, you can, uh, you know, interrupt me and ask any, any kind of question, or you can, uh, we can have, uh, you know, uh, if you want, if you like, also a kind of debate. Uh, uh, Vladimir told me that we have some minutes more, so uh, I don't, I don't find any problem if you interrupt me. Okay, so uh, it would be much better for me. Okay, let me share the PowerPoint. Okay, so um, okay, the title is. Uh, I hope you can see. Uh, you, you can see the PowerPoint. Yeah, yes? Yes, we can do. Okay, good, good. Um, yeah, so the, the, the topic is this one. Dukkha, uh, as you know, <laughs> is suffering in uh, Sanskrit in Pali, actually. And Nirvana, they are very important terms in uh, Buddhist philosophy and one, and they are the opposite, actually. You know, we are living in this Dukkha and uh, we are going to uh, we are searching for uh, a form of nirvana. Um, if you want, we can uh, translate this in uh, using two different terms. 
one is war, conflict, and the other one is peace. So Dukkha is war and Nirvana is peace. I feel that the chance we have to uh, investigate these two opposites, it's a, a pure psychological one. So we are really in a field which is uh, mm, including a lot of research on the human mind. This is what I feel and what I, you know, learned in these years uh, studying Sanskrit, uh, sorry, studying, uh, studying Buddhism from Sanskrit and Pali text. These are, uh, you know, the texts I'm using and I, I used to work on manuscripts. So this, uh, this is a Pali manuscript. And um, as you can see, it's not easy for me to, to be in a conference that is, uh, uh, you know, far from my expertise, but I hope I can say something uh, interesting. Um, as I said, you may think I should uh, talk about these, guy, these guys uh, and this organization. One is a very famous uh, monk from Myanmar, Viratu, uh, sorry for the pronunciation, should be Viratu, Virasu in, uh, in Pali. Uh, some students told me that has been, he has been arrested, if I'm not mistaken, but I, I really don't follow him. He was very, uh, you know, uh, very strong in his uh, position, uh, violent position against Muslim and so on. So uh, maybe if you uh, know him, uh, Kitty Wuto was a, a Thai monk that during Vietnam War in Thailand uh, is very famous for this sentence. He said, if you kill a communist, you won't get any good karma, bad, bad karma. So, you know, go. <laughs> you can kill. Uh, because after all, it's not a big scene. Um, then uh, we can say something about this uh, organization in Sri Lanka, which is a political organization. Bodu is a Buddha. Huh? Bala Sena is a power. Sena is army. I don't know why they translate with this Buddhist power force, but it's probably Correct. Sena is army. Bala is power. Uh, in English, you have the same debilitation without Bala, without strength, without power. But as I said, it's uh, it's very difficult to follow all these uh, political, uh, you know, ideas behind. And uh, I just feel that when they speak, they they say something that is not in the text. So I'm a philologist. If you say something that about Buddhism and this is not in the text. I start to doubt about you. So uh, I'm sorry to say I doubt about Pirato, about Kitty Butto, about many other uh, monks who are, you know, changing a little bit their uh, tradition. Um, one of the most important scholars in the world who is American, uh, Biku Bodhi, who is a great scholar, a great man. Uh, he is from New York. Actually, his origins are Jewish. He is a Jewish man. And, uh, uh, but his, uh, his work on the text is simply fantastic. This is uh, the beginning of his, one of his books, this one, in the Buddha's words. And he said that, you know, Buddhism is more or less searching for the welfare and happiness in this present life, is searching for the welfare and happiness in the next life, and also the supreme goal. So these are the three, uh, parts of the Buddhist search for something. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting because in the West, all the scholars, uh, maybe including myself, uh, at the beginning, they were only looking for, you know, investigating only the last one, the supreme goal. Oh, so we have to uh, understand this part because it's very important, but nobody gave uh, emphasis on the, on the text, we, which are talking about the happiness in these present life, which is very, you know, it represents a very big part of the Buddhist philosophy. So I'm going to say something about this part. Okay, so, uh, which is connected to obviously peace, but not the superior peace, the peace that we can have here in this life. Um, as you know, I like to uh, understand why and how they translate this word peace. Um, and so I had this idea to, to, to take uh, 
one of the most uh, important masterpieces in, uh, in our Western uh, literature, uh, War and Peace uh, by Tolstoy. And, uh, and so I was looking the, uh, for the translations in uh, Thai, for example, and they translated uh, this masterpiece uh, with the title Song Kran Le uh, and Santi Pap. Santi is the word for uh, peace in Thai. Santi Pap, Pap means a state of uh, peace or uh, even character, even uh, uh, condition, the mental condition of peace. Uh, so it's it's a very refined, a very 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 peculiar idea of peace. So Santi, and if you go in uh, in India and uh, you you go in uh, in Delhi in one of the bookstores, you find the translation, and the Hindi translation is Yud or Shanti, uh, Shanti again. So you immediately see that the word that they use is Shanti for peace. They use uh, it's an Indo-European word, so it's very important. And uh, I was thinking, okay, let me check in the Pali Canon. The Pali uh, Canon is the uh, textual tradition here in Southeast Asia for Buddhist uh, for Buddhist philosophy. And uh, I find uh, only few occurrences, so there are not so many places in which you can find Santi, uh, but you can find a lot of places in which you have Nibbana, Nirvana. Why? Because Santi, peace, and Nirvana are the same word. And I give you the proof of this. This is from Dhammapada, a very important text. There is no fire like lust attachment. There is no evil like hatred. There is no suffering like aggregates, means our personality, let's say. There is no bliss that surpasses peace. That is Nirvana. Nirvana. Even more precisely, Sutta Nipada, another great important text. Such a bhikkhu who has turned away from desire and attachment, he has obtained a deep knowledge in this world, has already gone to the immortal peace, uh, Matam Santi, and the eternal state of Nirvana. So you see, uh, peace is Nirvana. But is a form of Nibbana, uh, which must be somehow in our life. Otherwise, it, you know, it's just an idea. Okay, yeah, we have Nibbana, but it's untouchable, it's, uh, it's difficult to reach, and so on. No, Nibbana can be peace, can be also here. Um, now, where is the word? Uh, let me move this. Okay, maybe here. Um, the war, war, the word war, uh, uh, conflict, let's say, we, we can think that is uh, uh, possible to uh, uh, attach to the word suffering, no? which is the most important part in Buddhism. So in Buddhism, we have four noble truths, suffering, origin of suffering, cessation of suffering, and the way to reach this cessation of suffering. Suffering is uh, dukkha, as I said, and uh, it's a, uh, let's see if I can move this. Uh, it's a, uh, it's full of ideas. So dukkha in Buddhism is not only uh, suffering uh, because I cut my finger with a knife or uh, because I'm aging or because I'm sick or because I'm dying, okay? But suffering is also uh, psychological. It's a uh, lamentation, pain. Uh, one great um, American scholar who is a friend of mine in a personal communication recently told me that Domanassa can be, could be, can be translated with depression. So uh, we can say that Buddha is talking about suffering, uh, conflict, but don't, not only the conflict that we have naturally in our life, but also the conflicts that we, uh, personal create in our mind and then we send outside and we create problems, war, conflicts also outside. Uh, there is a cause of these conflicts. Now I turn to the, you know, to the, uh, to the conference topic. Eh? So I won't use Dukkha suffering, but I will continue to use 
uh, conflict, wars, and so on. So it would be more understandable, I hope. So uh, there is an origin of these conflicts. There is an origin of our wars, internal and external, because they are absolutely connected. And this cause is craving. Uh, the Buddhist word, the Pali and Sanskrit word is uh, tanka or trishna in Sanskrit, uh, that literally means thirst. So you, you, you need water, you need something, and there, there is this very strong desire to get something, okay? That is the origin of the problems, the origin, the origin of the conflicts, the origin of the world. And obviously, if I cut this craving, this uh, attachment, I will get peace. Um, let me show you, uh, well, this is the, uh, this is a very, I mean, a very famous uh, description of Nibbana, but it's, uh, Nibbana is the, the place in which you uh, are finally give up any kind of attachment, that you don't have any kind of mental pollution, let's say, and uh, uh, a, situ a condition in, in which you don't offer to any form of suffering the place to be rooted in your life is a, a, an interpretation of the word analaya. Um, analaya means also without attachment, but also uh, that you don't offer the place to the suffering to be in you. So you are not a place for suffering. It's a, it's a very refined, a very, very um, peculiar description of Nibbana. So uh, that is very important to uh, to notice, but what is, uh, in my opinion, even more important is that, let me move this, sorry, I hope, I, I hope my, my attempt to move is not creating problems to you. Okay, uh, the problem in Buddhism is that, uh, and this is not a problem, this is the, <laughs> the very important part of Buddhism, I think, is that you are not reaching peace, you, are, you don't have suffering. These sufferings and these peace are not yours, are not mine, because I do not exist as entity, as self. That is very important because it's a connection between me and the world. If I think that my suffering is my suffering, I don't understand and I will suffer again and again and again. The problem is mine, it's not suffering. If I cut this mind from my suffering, I will have a and uh, an awareness that suffering is not mine. So I will tend to avoid to create suffering to other people. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very clear and logical uh, situation. Visuddhi Marga is clear in this. Mere suffering exists, but not the sufferer, the person who suffers. The action that you do exists, but not the doer, not the actor of this. Nibbana, peace. Eh? Peace is existing, is there, but you cannot reach as entity. Because it's not your peace. It's the peace of all the people in the world, all the animals, all the plants, and so on. And the way to reach this peace is not, uh, it, it's existing, it's there, but you, you are not there when you walk on this path. Otherwise, you are not there. It's a very, it's very important because uh, important part of this Buddhist philosophy because you, 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 you cannot think to imagine, even imagine a form of peace or war uh, only for you. It's not, uh, it's completely, you know, universal uh, uh, idea of peace and war. Um, I just want to show you, if I have time now, yeah, a few minutes more, um, uh, a very complex idea, uh, probably the most difficult part of Buddhist philosophy is called the dependent origination. Uh, I use this, uh, and my students know very well, it's uh, the wheel of time, is, uh, is an image, uh, allegorical, I mean symbolical uh, image from Tibet, uh, from Tibetan tra tradition. And uh, uh, the representation is showing you all the uh, cause and effects that we always live in our life. So all our, um, all the moments in our life are based on this uh, cause-effect uh, 
sequence. So we have ignorance, as you see, then we have action, then we have consciousness, body, mind, six senses, contact, feeling, craving, clinging, becoming, birth, and then aging and death, and then ignorance and so on. So it's, a, it's very complex, but I, I, obviously I cannot go uh, too deeply in this, but I want to focus your attention here. Aging and death is another word for war and conflict. So we are suffering because of ignorance. If we are aware of our ignorance and our lack of self, the approach to peace will be easier. Um, and I want to show you these uh, 12 links that I'll show you now in a vertical uh, shape. And you see, no? I, I would say that the left column is uh, it's war. It's suffering uh, from Buddhist point of view, but from our uh, point of view, it's just war, conflict. But it's not an external conflict, it's an internal conflict that is going to become external. And in every moment is going on. It's going on in every moment of our life. It doesn't stop till the moment in which I realize that suffering is not only my suffering, but it's the suffering of other people as well. And that, in that very moment, I approach peace. I start to feel that there is a chance to go out from this will, to break the will, to break this domino effect. And then I start to uh, walk on this path to the final Nibbana, which is there, as you see. And as you see, it's a wheel, so it's up and down in the left column, but it's only up in the, in the right column. This is, uh, you know, when you touch this, you cannot go back. This is according to the Buddhist philosophy, obviously. Claudio, excuse me, uh, the left column is uh, the, I guess, 12 right principles are the ones that uh, you created or they are derived directly from Buddhism? This is uh, from Buddhism, it's exactly from this part. So, um, uh, well, if I, if I can use only one minute of my time. Um, in, uh, in every moment of our life, we have, um, uh, let's go back here. We have a form of ignorance. I don't know something. I don't know who is uh, 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 present in this conference, for example. No, I don't know something. And since I don't know, I built on this form of ignorance my actions. And that is a mistake. Okay, I don't know what is thinking a person and I can imagine very bad things. And then I start to build on this false and fake, I would say. Now it's an it's a important word. Now fake news, a lot of action, a lot of consciousness, a lot of uh, reaction from my body, and a lot of feelings, a lot of attachment. And then uh, this process, which is obviously negative, is going on. So I can imagine that I, I can create fights with other people, not necessarily war, but war, but you know, conflicts with other people and also within myself um, through this form of ignorance. I don't know. So on this form of ignorance. Why didn't you, excuse me, why didn't you put uh, Bert, uh, go back in the first house, you use Zodiac uh, uh, wheel, but you, you start from 11th house. So or 12 house, so aging that should be moved to the uh, two more houses down, and then you start from the first house. If this is zodiac field, right? You have 12, 12 fields, right? 12. Divi yes. they're, they're divided according to fixed and cardinals division, as I can see. But then maybe Bert should go from the left and then go over. Uh, yeah, like, sorry, I, I made a mistake. I, 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 uh, Bert is referred to this, oh sorry, to this. Uh, can no, you no, see my... More down than the first house, the, uh, the first like horizon, first horizontal axis is first house and then it goes from the first house, that is the wheel, like uh, 12 houses of your wheel is like that. Yeah, but uh, it starts from here, eh? from ignorance. Oh, let me put the, the mark. Okay, okay, never mind, just stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. the, the wheel is starting from here, ignorance. Uh -huh, from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and then the process is also, always clockwise. So it goes in that, this direction. You know that in, in, um, in Hindu Vedic uh, system, nine house is the house of uh, 
enlightenment and wisdom and achievement, intellectual achievement. So it's interesting that it's at the same time is ignorance and achieving enlightenment is like because they are two dualities, right? They, they, this is the same thing. Uh, yes. Ignorance and, and enlightenment are the same part. They are duality. Yes, they are dual. But what in Hinduism is a, a little bit different, different because then we have Maya and uh, and um, and all these things that uh, you know cover the reality. Uh, this is just a, how can I say a kind of map of our uh, continuously working process, mental process. So we start from here ignorance and uh, we go to uh, suffering. Let's say aging and death. And, uh, and this process can be broken exactly when we suffer. Um, and that's why we are here, in the, suffering is here, as you see, no? Uh, aging and death. Uh, and I imagine that this could be um, felt as a, a kind of um, war, conflict, let's say, that can be broken only with awareness. So we understand this, and uh, I go out from the from the circle. And uh, let me show you uh, the text itself. Okay, um, can I have five minutes more? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I mean, I prepared I think forty slides, so <laughs> it's just the beginning. But right anyhow, uh, this is the text itself. So you see, uh, actually, this is a. a a different version because it's one of the oldest uh, texts. It's from Diganitaya, Mani Dana Sutta. And, uh, and you can see here exactly what, I'm, what I mean. Look, uh, dependent or origination. And from craving, you have seeking. Then from seeking, you have acquisition. Then you have uh, a certain thing. Then you have desire and lust. You see, it's a crescendo, it's growing, 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 attachment. Then uh, possessiveness, the defensiveness, and the stinginess, sorry, stinginess, and then defensiveness. And then the text is going on and says, because of defensiveness, oh, you, you need to defend. You need to defend your ignorance. That is uh, paradoxical, but it's what we do every moment. Okay, we defend something because uh, it represents uh, our identity. That's why the Buddha said we don't have a self, because, you know, it's just something that has been built. Because of defensiveness, dependent of defensiveness, various evil and skillful phenomena come into play. The taking up of stick and knives, conflicts. Hmm? Okay, it's here. Our beloved uh, topic of the conference, quarrels and disputes, accusation, divisive divisive uh, speech and lies. Okay, as you see, at the end, he turns back to the psychological um, aspect of this. But at the beginning, he's talking, uh, the text is talking about conflicts, quarrels, and uh, knives, weapons, okay? So when we start to um, defend what we have got, uh, then the problems are right. Uh, this sutta, uh, the Mahanidana Sutta, a long time ago, when it was, uh, you know, uh, long time ago, I mean, the last century, uh, it was defined as the communist uh, sutta, the communist uh, uh, discourses of the Buddha. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit uh, too much, but actually, yes, it's not against the private property, obviously, but about the attachment to, the, to what we have. That is the problem, not the property. It's the attachment to the property. Um, uh, so, if you allow me, I will uh, show you only uh, one uh, um, uh, text that is very important, and I want to show you this. Um, this is the the way in which the Buddha, uh, Buddhist philosophy actually was thinking to the world. Now we, were, we are uh, aware, I hope, uh, that any kind of, um, uh, how can I say, uh, conflict that we have internal can be solved, okay, 
but uh, we don't get only internal peace if we solve our, our problems, but we get also an external peace, uh, which is, you know, uh, involving also other people around. This is a, a, a text that is a Singalovada Sutta. Let me go back to the Singalovada Sutta, uh, which is uh, one of the most important, and uh, I don't understand why it's not so famous, but because it's, uh, it's you know, it's, it's clearly saying that the Buddha is uh, talking also about the society. So um, these six points, Chadisa Patichani, as you see here, no? uh, the translation is very interesting because it's exactly what we are talking about. So um, when you practice this, this form of meditation, you give, you cover with peace the six uh, uh, direction of the world. So uh, north, east, south, west, then zenith and nadir. Okay. Uh, you cover them with uh, peace. Yeah, you see here, I try to translate this, which is Kemam. Kemam is not Santi, but it's a form of peace, uh, let's say, security, peaceful security. Let's say, let's translate that like that. So they pay homage towards East to the parents, uh, to the South to the teachers, to the uh, West to the wife or husband, to the north, to friends, then the ascetic to the uh, zenith, and then nadir to the workers. What I find interesting is if you read the text, you see that all these forms of meditation are not only one way. So I don't uh, ask to other people to do something, but the other people themselves ask me something to do. So it's always two ways. Uh, so, um, for example, if, I, if I'm talking about the workers, uh, if you read the text, it's clear that, you know, when you have workers from a Buddhist point of view, you have to guarantee them uh, a work that is according to their strength. His, their work has to be, uh, they have to be supplied with food and wage. Uh, you have to look after them when they are ill. Hmm? social security, sharing special delicacy with them, and then letting them, uh, letting them work at the right time. So, you know, uh, vacations and so on. Uh, and then obviously the workers have to respect the uh, employer. And then it's, uh, this is from a student. I love this because I always show to my students that they have, they have to respect me as teacher, but in the same time, to be teacher, I have to respect them. That is uh, the, the double um, way that they always had. Uh, this is husband and wife, wife and husband. As you see, the common point is three. So not committing, committing adultery. It's, uh, it's common. So both of them. And then friend, that is probably the most important. And I want to conclude now with this because time is lost, uh, finished now. Um, Friend means uh, a lot. Friend means uh, peace, if you think carefully. You know? So I can uh, have a, a pact uh, with other people. And, uh, but this pact has to be based on something which is mutual. Okay, so I respect, I am generous with my friend, but in the same time, to be a friend, he has to do something to me as well. And what I love is this one, the last one, uh, you have, if you want to respect your friend, uh, you give him, uh, um, you don't give him any false hopes, but then he has to give you back something which is fantastic, in my opinion, because he has to take care of future generations. So uh, his, uh, you know, uh, his care of kids, for example, it's not, uh, focused only on his kids, or his son, daughters, but also to son and daughters of other people. Um, and also, you know, future generation. So it's, uh, it's, it's clearly breaking all the possible borders. This piece is not only internal peace, because, you know, we always have this idea that Buddhism in the West, that Buddhism is a selfish religion and so on. No, at all, not at all, because this is the proof that they always like to 
open this uh, achievement. Otherwise, they don't work. It's not true if it's only your piece. Mm. So um, I have several other examples, but uh, now it's, uh, I think time is, uh, is not uh, uh, enough. Um, I want to thank you, and uh, obviously, if you want, we can discuss a little bit, but I would like to conclude with this um, Thai great monk, uh, Dhamma, 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 the Buddha Dasa, sorry. And uh, in uh, one of his books, uh, uh, which is not very famous, uh, and, uh, <laughs> is, the title is Dhammic Socialism. He wrote this uh, book, he didn't wrote this book, but uh, he was talking about these kind of things when during the Vietnam War. So you can imagine that uh, he had a lot of blame. Uh, what he said is this, uh, we all have a natural right to take as much as we need, but not more. If we were each to exercise this natural right to the extent allowed by nature, this world would be filled with a contentment such as we attribute to heaven, the realm of God, the Buddha Maitreya, where there is no dukkha, no unsatisfactoriness. So, where we have peace. The problem is always there, it's our attachment. And I feel, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm completely wrong, but I feel that uh, a different approach to these problems could, uh, could be, be, be very beneficial. That's why I, obviously, I don't trust the, the monks, uh, the fighting monks in, uh, in uh, Myanmar, in, uh, in Thailand also, or in Sri Lanka, and so on and so forth. So um, I think that I, it's okay, I finished here. Um, if you have any, any question, any, any comment? I have. Mirko. Yes, I have. So um, thank you. Really interesting uh, uh, presentation and so many things we could hear and learn and also get some of the ideas. Uh, well, while you were presenting, something pop into my mind with regard to dukkha right the yeah the uh, suffering right yes in um, mahabharata the second son of uh, uh kuru kingdom was called dustana and uh, the base the root of that word was also du or duk mm. and, and uh, it refers to something bad Yes, duke is the opposite of su, so it's a prefix that always yeah. gives uh, negative and, feelings, yes. And in my language, we also call duke as a spirit, negative spirit, like yeah. that. Yeah, sure. And uh, with regard to uh, uh, linguistics, it's quite interesting how to observe uh, the shift of a, uh, H to K, as we have kingdom of hazards and hazards, right? Yes. And with regard to that, like some idea for another research with regard to Kumans, after Mongol invasions, the Turkish people who spread through Euro-Asia area, even present in, 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 to, in up to Hungary. Yeah. And, um, well, origin and etymology of their name is not known at all, but just change K into H, and it's Humans. And whom was the name of Balkan? Actually, Balkan is Turkish name given to Balkan Peninsula be, 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 before it was called whom. Yeah, yeah. And whom means uh, hill and mountain. So that is idea that emerged in my head while <laughs> you were presenting uh, this with that to Dukkha and Du or yeah. Dushtana in Mahabharata. Second thing, very interesting, that also, those are some of my comments or ideas that are related to your topic. When you say san santi, that is peace, and uh, in duality of peace and war uh, are similar, right? The, the thin line between love and hate, peace and war. So I was thinking about the, the name of for war. Uh, I don't know, guys, if you know that yuda means war in Sanskrit, so the yuda, Babilka Yuda and the negatively presented Yuda refers also to the, to the name in Sanskrit that it has. Also, but then 
Besides Yuda, the word, the word used in Mahab Harata is Rat. We also use Rat as the uh, word for war. But then, if Sunday is peace and Rat is war or Yuda is war, they're not similar or uh, phonetically similar. How about Santi and, and uh, Shakti? Shakti. Uh, uh, so Shakti is force Shakti. and power. So sh Shanti is a sh it's two different roots. Uh, roots, sorry. Shan means uh, uh, to be in uh, peace. Uh, shan. Uh, shak is uh, power. So uh, sometimes yeah, yeah, the word what, is. What, what idea I have? If to be in peace and relate to nirvana means not to, it doesn't mean uh, not to be in war. It means not to be in any kind of power, not to have attributes. So it's uh -huh. lack of shakti. So santi could be understood as lack of shakti as nirvana could also refer to lack of attributes, which is in uh, Brahma Purana was also portrayed as uh, the, the world behind or beyond uh, Mahavidya Maha, uh, Mahamaya, which is our world of uh, illusion and world of duality. So beyond duality, there is no attributes. <laughs> and that is nirvana, right? So uh, yes, it's uh, if you if you think uh, our ego is an attribute, is uh, they call upalakshana. So it's a characteristic that is uh, is not stable. So it's like they, they always have this fantastic, fantastic example. It's like a, a bird that is, uh, uh, you know, that stays on a, on, a, on a branch of a tree and then it flies away. So you cannot see that that tree is the tree with the bird because if the bird will fly away, you cannot recognize the tree. So you cannot say that I am Claudio because I'm Italian because uh, I'm not only Italian. I'm uh, Italian only because now this bird Italian bird is on my tree, but I'm my tree. It's different. Uh, so yeah, exactly what you said. And then the story of Maya then is so, I mean, it's a... Uh, well, yeah, no, I, I really like those principles and then the, the finding, uh, the finding, the introdu uh, introduction of third sattvic element, which is actually nirvanic element, like uh, uh, harmony or absence, but in, in our world of Maya is harmony of duality, but in the world of Nirvana is, there is no even a Sattvic, no. there is nothing there, there is a, there. Absolutely true, yes, yes, yes. So maybe this so, Asanti Shakti uh, duality could be, could be interesting for, to, uh, to connect to Nirvana. Yeah. Hey, why don't, why don't you try to do that? Uh, there is new conference coming on spirituality and then deal a little bit with the Shakti element in, in, uh, in Hinduism. Could be really interesting to connect with some, something. Yeah, actually it's my, my hobby is to read the uh, uh, Shaiva text, uh, which is the, uh, oh. the tantric uh, Hindu text from Kashmir. Oh. So uh, Shakti is, uh, is oh. very important for them. So yeah. Good. Would, great. But maybe we will talk about this. Uh, yeah, so. okay. Thank you, thank you. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Anybody else? How are you? Hello, Professor. How are you? I, I, I'm questioning you even on Saturday. You see? <laughs> Lucky us. Uh, first of all, thank you for your presentation. I think it, it really got a lot of people thinking because on a personal level and on a conflict level, we discussed quite a few topics, but I think seeing, and I took your course, so it's nothing that you know I haven't seen You're before. Cool. But at the same time, I think being reminded that we are in the suffering is also an indication that salvation is possible by the, by the logic of the will. So I think it's very, very important we recognize that maybe we are within the suffering stage, but there is also many, many more levels that we can develop to. And not just on a personal level, but on a conflict and peace analysis. So I just want to thank you for this reminder. Yeah, thank you. And you remember the the movie that you liked? I know. Uh, yes. It's not a movie. It's a, it's completely a human. It's a piece of testimony. It's incredible. And uh, and what you noticed immediately is exactly what I I was talking about before. So you know, if we think that. Uh, 
our decision, our crisis, no? I, I had to decide. It's between, uh, uh, as you said, Mirko, Nibbana and, uh, and uh, war and suffering, then I, 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 I can hardly go out from this circle. But if I think that, you know, my uh, decision has to be taken from, uh, between the decision between war and peace, and not related to uh, a person who is uh, fighting or a person who is in peace, then I will, uh, you know, I would be free. Uh, actually, this is what the, the, the man said in, uh, in, uh, in the documentary. No, exactly this one. I'm not talking about, you know, Israeli people or Palestinian people. I'm talking about, uh, you know, peace and war. That yes. is my decision. As a concept, yes. And I think it's very useful because in the end of the day, these elements that come, like I can talk about my own personal conflict, we have quite a few nationalities here that have experienced conflict, you yeah. know, in their own field. But I think there's very detrimental principle that just we keep following and it's so evident. We keep continuing to pursue certain means instead of changing the mindset to begin with, with us personally, and then it will radiate on a larger level. Yeah, so yeah. I like, honestly, I, I did not even know about Buddhist principles, even coming here for 20 years until this year. And I can say as an IR student, as a theory concept even, mm -hmm. it has enriched my view beyond limits. So I just want to thank you. And I'm glad this was the last presentation. Oh, yeah, I'm concluding. That's very, it's a big honor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Claudia, for closing uh, our you, uh, session, session in general for this conference and especially for our floor. And thank you very much for everything, Mirko, because yeah. you are very, very kind and organizing. And I, yeah, I didn't I, know that you are you know a lot about Hinduism. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. yeah, I have many hobbies. You never talk about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would be more than happy to, to talk more about yeah, that. that and, that's incredible. And then hopefully we could go together to, to these kind of yeah, conferences yeah, in the future, cool. right? Yeah, yeah. Even, uh, I mean, tomorrow people are also organizing uh, conferences on similar okay. or the same topics or themes. So, mm -hmm. guys, if you, you want to go again to conference, you are perfect audience and participants and everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So we will, we will do that. We will for sure plan to do that. So, okay. Thank you all and thank you for thank for you. this wonderful conference. To I have my thank as a, as an organizer to Webster University all participants and tomorrow people who who made this uh, happen. And uh, Vladimir, you want to say closing words and close conference? I'll try if the internet connection works. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Claudio, for, 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 for this. And now my time for suffering has come because this has come to an end. But I, I wanted to thank you all for, for making this really joyful experience for me. And um, well, we, we had really great engagement, over 2,000 messages exchanged, and probably half of that uh, was Professor Dinesh and me, <laughs> but nevertheless, it was a great engagement, and thank you for making this really, really dynamic learning and network experience. I want to invite you to stay on the platform because it's gonna be available for you to continue discussion and networking for the next couple of months. Um, those who are new, welcome to the Tomorrow People family, and we are looking forward to keeping in touch with you. And see you next year. And yeah, well, one more thing, we do have uh, one gift for you. Uh, later on in the afternoon, uh, uh, we invite you to join us the Guided Meditation for Peace uh, with Sofi Bida. If you are uh, on the bus traveling, you can also download the, the Huva app and join with your personal account. If you, if you want to do so. And uh, yeah, with this, I want to thank you all once again for joining thank us. Thank you. And uh, yeah, let's keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. 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 See you. <laughs> <laughs>